in the previous lecture we have started to deal with the very famous relativistic equation which is called dirac equation actually you have seen that the difficulties of the clean gordon equation was overcome by dirac by introducing a hamiltonian which is actually linearly dependent on the momentum in fact in the clean gordon equation there was a very important difficulty that the hamiltonian or energy may have both positive and negative values and that introduces a very important difficulty in and the finding the probability density so to rectify that problem dirac uh, uh, introduced a hamiltonian which was actually linearly dependent upon the momentum and for that dirac postulated that the hamiltonian uh, may be uh, written as c times alpha dot p plus beta mc square actually here uh, this alpha hat and beta hat are the operators used by dirac in a historical pathway okay in fact uh, in this equation you can see that the hamiltonian is linearly dependent on the momentum vector and uh, when uh, dirac postulated this hamiltonian the problem of uh, uh, clean gordon equation was overcome okay and uh, introducing this uh, hamiltonian dirac obtained the uh, relativistic equation and that equation was nothing that was simply the schrodinger time dependent equation in which the hamiltonian is replaced by this expression defined in equation a which is actually called dirac hamiltonian okay and so you have seen in the previous lecture that dirac equation is written in this form i h bar del psi of r t del t equal to minus i h bar c alpha dot del psi of r t plus beta m c square psi of r t this is nothing this is simply uh, i h bar del psi by del t equal to h psi okay now this equation can be written in this manner when you will take this term in lhs in rhs then what will be the result you can see that this may be written as minus i h bar del del t minus i h bar c alpha dot del plus beta m c square psi of r t equal to 0 okay and in another form this equation is equivalently written like this this is minus i h bar del del t minus i h bar c summation over k from 1 to 3 alpha k del del x k in fact this alpha dot del this operator has been written as summation over k where k runs from 1 to 3 alpha hat k del del x del del x k okay so this is uh, the dirac equation which we have learnt in the previous lecture okay in fact uh, in this equation you can see that dirac has actually introduced uh, two operators are denoted by the symbol alpha and beta actually these two operators are related to the property of the particles uh, if you are talking about the particles of zero uh, rest mass like photon then actually these operators uh, involved in this equation uh, are actually the poly spin vector okay and uh, as they are in this case they are recognized as poly spin vector the implication is that the associated particles have a spin half okay and uh, we will see later on that uh, this uh, operator alpha and beta in the dirac hamiltonian are also related to the spin of the particles 
एंड टू द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ एंटी पार्टिकल्स और यू कैन से द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ नेगेटिव एनर्जी स्टेट यू विल सी ओके सो एज दिस इन दिस इक्वेशन द टू ऑपरेटर्स एल्फा एंड बीटा हैज बीन आर्बिट्री यूज बाई डिराक एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो सी दैट दिस इक्वेशन इज ऑफ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर इन बोथ टाइम एंड स्पेस डेरीवेटिव यू कैन सी द टाइम डेरीवेटिव एग्जिस्ट लाइक दिस डेल डेल टी एंड स्पेस डेरीवेटिव इज लाइक डेल डेल एक्स के सो यू कैन से दैट टाइम डेरीवेटिव एंड स्पेस डेरीवेटिव इन दिस इक्वेशन आर एक्चुअली ऑन सेम फुटिंग एंड बोथ आर ऑफ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर सो दिस इज जस्ट ए फर्स्ट ऑर्डर a relativistic wave equation and and you know uh, that uh, in clean gordon equation actually that space derivative was of second order and uh, the time derivative was of first order and that was the difficulty for the lorentz covariance of clean gordon equation but as in dirac equation you can see that both the time derivative and the space derivative are of first order so uh, it will be it can be easily said that this dirac equation will be covariant under lorentz transformation so this uh, dirac equation is a lorentz covariant we can easily point out it okay again uh, it is found and uh, i have actually explained in the previous lecture too that uh, these two operators alpha and beta alpha and beta both of these operators are independent of a space coordinate and time coordinate both are independent okay and at the same time you have also seen that uh, these operators alpha and beta uh, do not commute but they anti commute they are uh, they are actually anti commutator of one another and due to these two facts what are those these two facts the first one is that alpha and beta operators are independent of space and time coordinate and the another fact is that alpha and beta both anti commute not commute due to these two regions or these two properties you can easily say that these two operators alpha and beta cannot be a simple algebraic number and it can also not be a differential operator so uh, it can be said certainly that the operators alpha and beta uh, found in this dirac hamiltonian are neither algebraic numbers and nor they are uh, differential operators so what are these so then uh, only one option remains left and what is that option in fact in this condition these two operators must be matrices must be matrices and when you treat this alpha these alpha and beta as matrices then these are called actually dirac matrices and then so now our aim is to express this dirac equation in terms of the uh, dirac matrices okay and uh, then you will see that you will get a, a <coughs> covariant form of dirac equation or you can say that the four vector form of dirac equation so uh, in this is just a, this lecture is just a continuation of the first lecture when in your in your examination if you are asked that uh, uh, derive the dirac relativistic equation then uh, apart from the matters in first lecture you have also write the matters in this uh, second lecture only uh, the fact which i have mentioned here that results of previous lecture this should be not mentioned in your answer but uh, uh, starting from here uh, where i have mentioned covariant form of dirac equation you have to add this portion of discussion also in your answer when uh, dirac equation is to be derived okay so uh, as i have told you that all these things i have mentioned here you can see i have written all these things in 
and the lang in language and for your convenience okay and as i have told you just now that these operators alpha hat and beta are independent of a space and time coordinate and also they anti commute so they can neither be numbers and nor be differential operators then as i have told you <coughs> that the matrix uh, representation uh, remains only uh, the alternative way to represent these operators so now uh, we will treat these two operators alpha hat and beta as matrices and when you treat these alpha and beta as matrices then these are called dirac matrices okay so now uh, whenever i will write alpha and beta you should think that these are dirac matrices and uh, in matrix uh, notation we drop the symbol of hat which represents a, an operator so now in instead of alpha hat we will now write simply alpha okay or you can say alpha k hat we will only write alpha k and in instead of beta hat now in matrix representation with this beta hat will be written only beta okay in fact for convenience here we introduce a set this is uh, this set is gamma mu in a state of alpha and beta actually this set gamma mu is actually just like a four vector here mu is actually equal to 1 2 3 and 4 so you can say that uh, this uh, gamma mu uh, is actually uh, a four vector so gamma mu as I, you can see i have written it here like this this is gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 and gamma 4 and uh, this gamma mu is defined like this its first three components that is gamma 1 gamma 2 and gamma 3 is defined like this gamma k equal to minus i beta alpha k so from here you can say that what will be gamma 1 gamma 1 will be minus i beta alpha 1 gamma 2 will be what this will be minus i beta alpha 2 and gamma 3 this will be minus i beta alpha 3 okay and its fourth component gamma 4 is defined by this beta so you can write uh, this set of uh, this set uh, gamma mu uh, as a four vector and this is uh, equal to minus i beta alpha k beta here k is actually equal to 1 2 and 3 okay so by the use of this set of uh, matrices uh, gamma mu now we can express uh, the dirac equation in more convenient form which is actually the covariant form and uh, at the same time you also know that the position four vector or the radius four vector x mu is uh, represented as x1 x2 x3 x4 where x1 x2 x3 are actually the components of the uh, three dimensional position vector r and the fourth component is ict this is actually the uh, temporal component okay so in terms of this uh, these two four vectors gamma mu and uh, this x mu now uh, the dirac equation uh, which i have mentioned here and discussed in the previous lecture uh, can be written in a very simple form which is actually called the four vector form or the covariant form of dirac equation you can see when uh, we will actually uh, <coughs> combine these first two terms in the dirac equation that is minus i h bar del del t uh, minus i h bar c summation over k 1 2 3 and alpha k del uh, x k 
here uh, there is no need to write this sign of summation because according to einstein summation convention since k is the repeated index so without writing the sign of summation summation is already implied so you cannot uh, write this sign of summation too okay now when this uh, these first two terms will be uh, written in terms of the uh, four vector gamma mu you can see that uh, this second term is actually the first three components of gamma mu and uh, this uh, first uh, term will be uh, can be expressed as a fourth term fourth component and so uh, and this beta mc square you know that beta will be now equal to gamma 4 this is actually gamma 4 and uh, this equation in terms of this gamma mu you can easily check that this can be written like this this is gamma mu del del x mu plus k psi of x mu equal to 0 you can check it actually here this k is equal to mc over h bar in fact you can see when you will write gamma see here this gamma mu gamma mu you know uh, this gamma mu mu is equal to actually equal to 1 to 4 so this will be gamma 1 del del x1 okay and plus gamma 2 del del x2 okay plus gamma 3 del del x3 and plus gamma mu uh, sorry gamma 4 del del x4 and you can check x1 x2 x3 these are simply x1 x2 x3 but x4 means ict okay and gamma 4 gamma 4 means beta and gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 are what you can see gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 are these much okay so uh, when we will substitute these values uh, the equation in compact form can be written like this okay and k is here mc over h bar in fact uh, as you know that uh, this operator del del x mu is also written in a compact form like del del mu so this equation c can also be written as gamma mu del mu plus k psi of x mu equal to 0 you can see that this is actually the covariant form of the dirac equation or you can also say that this is dirac equation in four vector form here this gamma mu actually are actually the four matrices and these are dirac matrices okay so in terms of dirac matrices now we have expressed the dirac equation and this is the covariant form of dirac equation actually when you say covariant form by taking this form of a dirac equation you will see later on in the forthcoming lecture that we can easily prove the lorentz covariance of this dirac equation so in this lecture our aim was only to to only to express the dirac equation in covariant form or four vector form but in the next lecture uh, our aim is to discuss the proper different important properties of dirac matrices or you can say we will discuss the dirac algebra in the forthcoming lectures so again i am telling you when in your examination it is asked that uh, uh, write uh, the dirac equation or derive the dirac equation you have to write the answer by combining my first video on Dirac equation and this video on Dirac equation both of these two video will be the complete answer okay so I think we have enjoyed this lecture too like the previous lecture and uh, wait for the next lecture which will be on the important properties of Dirac matrices actually the different properties of Dirac matrices uh, is very important for you in your in in fact in competitive exam examination like net grf the important objective problems are asked uh, frequently uh, related to this uh, these dirac matrices
ओके सो थैंक यू वेरी मच